This is a classic bicycle rear wheel from the 1980s featuring a six-speed cassette. It also comes with a cup and cone style rear hub which in this video I'm going to completely take apart. I'm going to show you the components inside, what's involved, the tools that I use for rebuilding a hub such as this. The cup and cone style hub has been around for a hundred years by now but modern bicycles still feature cup and cone style hub. For example entry level road bikes such as Giant Contend right now in 2020 still have wheels fitted with cup and cone style hubs. So cup and cones are here to stay. Let's take a look at the tools first. Why not? 15 millimeter bicycle wrench is needed for some of the bolts on the on the cones. I'll show you where the cones are and where the cups are. So 15 millimeter bicycle style, 15 millimeter automotive style. But this one has been ground tapered to fit the cones a little better. So two of everything, two 15 and two 17s. One socket, one looking like this because they are counter rotating. You'll see. This comes with a quick release axle. The quick release axle looks like this. Don't lose the springs. When the whole thing is assembled the springs of course compress and they sit in the frame spars. Okay. Quick axle of course goes in with the nut on the drive side not the not the cam lock on the drive side typically. And for contrast I also have over there another wheel same cup and cone but I'm gonna use that as well because it has dry components whereas everything out of this is going to be greasy I already assembled it because I changed the rear axle and I had a test fit on it the new axle is a modern material this is the packaging for it it's a chrome molybdenum steel stronger axle because the old one which is in my hand kept bending and it's black and it's medium carbon steel so chromo chromo molybdenum steel is going to be stronger it the axle itself is 137 millimeters in length and its diameter nominally 10 millimeters so the thread pitch is 10 by 1 QR quick release that I just uh, showed you and one feature that is missing from the assembly and is dry and I can show you these two tabbed washers are also part of the axle assembly the tabbed washers fit the old axle which have these flat which has these flat surfaces machined into it where the tabbed washers fit like so with the tab lined up on it the new axle doesn't have this flat surface machined on it so the tabbed washers don't work I just verified the fit without the washers and I'm gonna just go with plain round washers like so of comparable thickness than what the tabbed washers were obviously these ones are a little bit thicker but it's not a problem it fits the frame I just checked it so assembly sorry this assembly begins with the 17 millimeter component and this is just gonna be about half a minute of turning the wrench sorry and of course the other way around maybe I'll do it without this first and I can change direction on it and just to get it started and now at about this point the axle assembly is coming out and it's also getting loose. There are loose bearing bolts inside so I really want to get back over this tray. 
necessary about the crunchy noises on the tray there really is a point to this uh, bakery item tray whatever because the components are likely to drop out the loose bearing balls so on this side it doesn't look like we're making progress because one side is gonna be tighter than the other and it's unpredictable which one we're still making progress good now it's coming out so how this looks like from the other side what is this we have some of these components two lock nuts and one cone everything like I said is lubricated here so this is why I have the cookie tray or bakery tray or whatever so whatever dirt is gathered I can see it and remove it also two tools that are going to be used here are tweezers because the bearing balls will be small so I'm going to put this back on the tray and the rest of the axle here comes out looking of course greasy like this what we have here is the same cone here a spacer cone spacer one washer lock nut I'm gonna have to put the 15 millimeter wrench on the cone here you can see a flat spot on the cone there I'm gonna show you the clean components as well and rotate it against this 17 millimeter lock nut and to do that I need the 15 and where did I put the 17 found it Possibly the skinnier 15 there is gonna fit better, and the 17 mil there. Maybe I uh, there. The 17 mil needs to counter rotate like so. Like I said, I'm gonna show you the clean components in just a sec. So my extra washer needs to be added at uh, around this spot there and then it's good to go back together hopefully the size of that round washer still fits the rest of the components that's also a consideration now let me grab a rag so I can show you the dry parts with a dry hand where this larger washer needs to fit it looks like this okay. this one is also the same type of cup and cone axle from which I have removed this cassette set so the large washer needs to fit through this ring here that you see it's a slightly different design on this one but that's basically the idea this washer needs to fit inside this space I hope that makes sense because it's gonna go back in the on this cup and cone I'll show you the cone part since we're at it so on the hub this is just the hub this is where you can see the cup this surface is the cup here and what I got rid of was of course nothing will remove this easily this is part of the freewheel assembly here 
which is ratcheting like so in normal operation and of course has further small bearing walls to it which I'm gonna omit at the moment but the cup surface is difficult to see that's why I have it right here so this is the cup surface on which bearing balls will roll nine pieces on this side there's another cup which is much easier to see on the opposite side here so this is the non-drive side the left side of the wheel also the bearing balls will go here now on the greasy one you can see the same things but as gonna be everything is gonna be greasy very straightforward now putting everything back together of course is a bit of a geometric challenge it's not impossible but just takes a lot of time because the bearing balls look like let's just, just loose bearing balls now the small ones come out of the free hub that I just put there but the large ones are the size that are inside this so these bearing balls will start dropping out into the cookie tray I really don't want to drop them out but as I pull the axle out they will be visible let me just put this greasy component on something that's easy to wipe off I'm gonna get the camera off the tripod and we're gonna have a look-see inside the loose bearing balls are in embedded in grease green grease that's what you're looking at uh, because they are well greased they are staying in place but I'm prepared if some of them decide to drop out I can catch them with this cookie tray you can see them they are much closer to the surface on this side so this is the outside of the cup the cone is again on the axle this is the cone and this the cones surface here has a little bit of a curvature to it and you can see this shiny surface that's where those loose bearing balls which are just held in place just by sheer friction at the moment or the adhesion adhesive forces of the grease that's why the only reason if you take it apart and it's likely to be dry they will start dropping out and rolling everywhere so this is where those bearing balls roll on this surface of the cone okay and what I did previously there was a spacer and a cone and a lock nut and I had to add one extra washer here between spacer and lock nut that's what I did on this greasy one here and so this is how the components look like when they are clean uh, on this axle there's one extra nut here this is not a quick release axle so it's not hollow so the same quick release skewer doesn't go through this so this is a solid axle and it also has a little bit of design variant it also has this dust shield in place which is just friction fit like so so that axle or yeah that hub assembles with this axle with these dust shields on both cones looking like so and the longer spacer always goes to the drive side and then it just goes in of course without the you know you have to take apart the axle assembly to pull off one cone one spacer and the washers and the lock nut from one side to make it go through the hub so now I have added one washer on one side there I'm gonna put you back on the tripod and it's not too spectacular I'm gonna add one more spacer to 
this ah two of the bearing boards came out nice so I have something to put back so that's what I mean they just drop out so I have two lock nuts but between the two of them I'm gonna add one more flat washer so that's gonna complete the assembly and the assembled length from from lock nut to lock nut from the outside of the lock nut to the outside of the lock nut has to be 126 millimeters on a 137 millimeter axle to fit the frame inside the axle spars it has to be that distance so I'm gonna get to work this is what's inside I have a little bit of fiddling ahead of me it's fairly straightforward and some tightening it's uh, tedious so get ready to not go to the washroom eat whatever before you get to this because this is gonna be yeah tedious in short with these loose bearing balls.